<laughs> All right. Here we go, our nice little uh, Friday chat. Uh, super stoked. We have Heidi from uh, Mary Edwards uh, today. This is going to be uh, amazing. Uh, I'm, I'm super stoked. I've been a big fan of, of Mary Edwards for, for quite some time. So, um, uh, for, these, for those of you that don't know Mary Edwards, um, well, you're about to know it. Uh, this is going to be pretty rad. I, uh, I've been drinking Mary Edwards for quite some time, and uh, I don't want to get into why and, and how it all went into. Um, I think that there is Heidi from Mary Edwards. Let's just bring her in, you know? Uh, there we go. Heidi. Hello. Hey. How are you? I'm I'm good. I'm good. How are you? I'm good. I thought I had everything set up, and then I went to go live with you, and I'm like, where? Why isn't it working? <laughs> yeah. Well. But here you, I am. <laughs> you literally have a a much better uh, backdrop than I do. Uh, <laughs> it's you, you planned. You promised me blue skies, though. Um, yeah. Oh, it is kind of blue, actually. As you move, yeah, if you move, it, it does look blue. Yeah, it's, see, there's it's a little funny it's how it changes. I don't know why the we have that light change there, but. <laughs> I don't know either. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, technology, you know, it, it accepts something and not the other. I, I, I don't know. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Well, so uh, uh, how are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. I'm glad it's Friday right before three day weekend. I'm sure you are too. And everybody else on here. <laughs> is it a three day weekend? It is for us. We're taking it. I'm taking I any know. three day weekend I can get these days. I'm working at the wrong winery. Sorry, I apologize. My my lovely puppy is wants to get in on this like he usually does. Nice. Uh, <laughs> uh, that, that's great that you have a three day weekend. That, that's awesome. I guess it was a President's Day on Monday. Is that? Yes. Yeah. Yes. I, don't, I don't even know what the holiday is because I don't get it off. So. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. You know. I, I know. Well, it, it, it absolutely looks beautiful behind you. Um, it, it's not bad. It's a, it's a little, uh, you know, barren. We're going to start pruning on Tuesday, which is very exciting. Well, um, that and, was my next question is, uh, so when are you guys going to start pruning? Because, I, I mean, I'm a winemaker, so I want to just kind of go into the, uh, you know, the deets, the, good, the stuff that you and I, you know, kind of. The stuff we like, enjoy. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. So. When, when, uh, when are you guys going to, you know, dive into that? Yeah, we uh, started pruning last, no, two weeks ago in our Sauvignon Blanc. Um, and this year we have hired the Italian consultants, Simonet and Search, to help us with our pruning with the goal of um, getting vine structure looking better, more consistent, and aiming for longevity in our vines. So, um um, it's exciting. Our Sauvignon Blanc, which we started with, those vines are only five years old. So we're really getting a good start with them. And then the vines behind me, they were planted. This is our Cooper Smith Vineyard that surrounds our winery. They were planted in 2001. So a little bit older. Um, and there's some interesting things that have happened over the years. So we're going to try and bring it back to, to where it should be. Uh, we always have those interesting things happening um, and that we have to, especially pruning, we have to like try to, let, let's train it back to where we need to be, right? Yeah, it's, I mean, it's such an art to get the the plant to stay in the confined space that we've given it on a trellis and also yeah. produce what we want. I mean, vines want to go out, they're a vine, <laughs> want to keep growing <laughs> and we're trying to keep them you know, compact. So it, no, it's definitely an art. Yeah, absolutely. Well, it's, um, it, it's interesting. I mean, I, I kind of want to geek out even more. Um, I know people don't, I, I don't know if people want to hear this at all, but I, I, I kind of want to go back to what you were saying before is, you know, how you're shifting. Yeah. You know, uh, Cause I think a lot of people don't, don't realize like we make a lot of big decisions pruning wise and, and it, it, it can, it carries on year and year. I mean, there's, there's, 
there's a lot of things that we do. And so what, what are you doing to those, I guess those blocks that, you know, that to, to make them better than they were before, I guess. Well, the cool thing about looking at a vine right now without the leaves and without fruit is you can really see how balanced that vine was throughout the growing season. Because when it has all the leaves on it, it's hard to tell just how many shoots are, are shorter or weak compared to the strong shoots. How strong is the vine really? I mean, you see all these leaves on it, you might get the impression that it's pretty strong, but now that it's barren, you can see that, you know, maybe there's only a couple of shoots off of those canes that were strong. Do sh shoot width, you know? Yeah. Like how thick are, the, are those shoots coming up? Yeah. Right. And so after you see that, you can make that assessment. Maybe we need to um, leave less wood out there, fewer buds, because that vine isn't producing enough uh, or doesn't have enough energy to um, to uh, grow all those shoots. Um, so that's one thing we're doing. Um, in some cases, the vine is getting too high. So we have fruiting wires, right? And And usually we have the canes going along the fruiting wires to keep the fruit in a nice orderly spot for the pickers to come through and, and the leafers to come through and, yeah. and leaf and, you know, makes it easier to farm. Yeah. Well, um, you know, it's sometimes as the vine ages, that head goes up and up and up and suddenly it's above the fruiting wire. So is that in general what has happened? Maybe we need to find a way to bring the head down by looking for what we would call suckers on the trunk that are lower and would make yep. a better position. Or in some cases, what we're doing is saying, now oh, let's leave it where it is and let's move that wire to a higher position on the pole and just let the vine be. Um, it's finding that yeah. balance between uh, allowing the vine to realize its full potential and go where it wants to go, but oh. also control it so we can mount the right amount of fruit. Yeah, I mean, a couple things. One, uh, your background sounds like a, a Disney film. Uh, you have birds chirping, it is, it is amazing, it is beautiful. I'm so, I'm so bummed that, I, I mean, I had to leave Tally to, you know, it's Friday, I, I gotta get away from there at some point. Um, so I, I, I definitely, I came home, but um, it, it, it looks amazing over there. Uh, we dove straight into nerdy uh, uh, did. kind of vineyard management stuff, um, which I don't think we were supposed to. Uh, yeah, we should probably <laughs> bring it back to like uh, yeah, let's back for up. fun Friday night hey, stuff. Heidi, who are you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I love that. I mean, it, it, it's more it's more on me because I love I love that. I mean, I, I, I'm I, I, obviously I do the same thing you do. And so I, I love that kind of stuff. I like to talk about that stuff, but we should probably say like, hey, first and foremost, we have Heidi from Mary Edwards, um, which is awesome. And, and I, I, I guess I'll, I'll just throw out my, my Mary Edwards. I mean, I, I've met Mary, actually, actual Mary Edwards, uh, you know, I, I, and a lot of people have, you know, many times just, you know, industry, we do, we do things. Um, but it was funny, and this is not whopping related at all because it's it was Saw Blanc, and I think you probably hear this a lot. I mean, it, it was the OG, like, best Saw Blanc in California. You know, I, I feel like I feel like when 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 that when I was doing that, it was it was it was uh, it was that Saw Blanc, and and um, oh geez, uh, oh, I can't think of the other uh, other Saw Blanc, but but anywho, it, it was it was a di it was just a different thing, you know, that, that anybody had, was doing really. And it was so good and so complete. And, and I, I love it. I, I have so, I mean, it, it, it's funny uh, how many times we, we tasted that and dissected that Saw Blanc. But really, I mean, Pinot Noir was, the, the, I think that was, that was everything to Mary Edwards. Like I was, it was so much part of that brand. Um, and then, you know, you, you eventually, you know how we go, we dive into other things, we slope into other, other wines. So, um, I will again, back up who is Heidi. So I am the winemaker at Mary Edwards winery. I actually worked with Mary for five years. Um, she hired me in 2015 to be her successor because 
she was like, okay, I'm going to be retiring one of these days and I want to spend some more time with my grandkids and uh, traveling and enjoying. So we worked together for five Imagine years. Imagine that, right? You I know. Do I'm something after. else besides uh, the grind of winemaking, you know? I don't know if it's a grind, but it, yeah. you know. <laughs> It's good she was looking ahead. Um, so she brought me on. Um, it was a mutual friend introduced us. And I came from a Cabernet background, which is what Mary really liked about me because she wouldn't have to undo any bad habits from another Pinot Noir winemaker. But, but, but <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that, that's funny because I did, I, I, I definitely read up on your, your history, but that, that's a funny thing to say. I, I sorry, sorry to interject, but um I guess Cav is so different. Is that what her thing was? Like, well, that's a different thing. So I can, uh, I yeah. can do Peter Noir. Well, I think there's two things. You know, on the one hand, Cab is different. And, and so I, I didn't have a strong Pinot Noir background. I didn't have strong opinions about how Pinot should be made. Um, yeah. And then also we make a much more extracted big style of Pinot. That's our style. So, I mean, in a way we're, we're going for like big tannins and some of those things that you might aim for in a Cabernet. So, um, you know, there's, there's some similarities there. Um, and, and I love Pinot for my entire career, especially Russian river Pinot. So, uh, I already had my sights set on trying to get into the Russian River and, and make some wine over here. And so this was an opportunity that I jumped at when it when it presented itself. Um, and then in 2018, I took over the reins from Mary and we she was still here consulting with me through um, the beginning of 2020. And then she was able to make a big trip to Pilau right as everything was starting to close down yeah, she was in her big retirement trip in which is great <laughs> <laughs> yeah i know it, it's so awesome uh to you know you took over in 18 it, it, i don't know the whole story is, is pretty awesome I, she she's i mean i guess again we, we keep backing up she has been such a huge part of california winemaking i think she <laughs> again made the best, I, 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 I'm sorry to go back to Sal Blanc, but the best Sal Blanc. In everybody does. Country. I know, everybody does. And I, I just remember, I, this This sounds, I, I hope Mary's not watching, but when I was in college, we would always talk about like, you know, her Sal Blanc and, 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 and how it was made and, and how distinct it was and so, how interesting it was. And I feel like, I mean, I, I went to the, the tasting room when I was, you know, 21, 22, whatever. And you saw it's like, oh, wow, look at all these Pinot Noirs that they're making um, Russian River uh, specifically. And they were just, they were just the, the phenomenal. I mean, I, I've always been a huge fan uh, of, 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 of hers, of the winery. And I think that, you know, you. taking over an 18 is, 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 is spectacular. And I know you, you, you have a history of, of making wine. I know you were a teacher before, you know, in a- That was, that was a brief thing. That was yeah, two yeah, years in the Peace Corps. You know what? The website says it. So <laughs> what am I supposed to do? You know? You know, hey, when I have a degree in chemistry, I didn't know what I wanted to do. So yeah. why not join the Peace Corps and figure it out? Dude, and that, that's great because you, 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 you taught in uh, Africa, right? I mean, yeah, I was in was, Tanzania. Tanzania exactly and so that I mean that's awesome in itself and I know that's a totally different thing but awesome yeah yeah, yeah for sure um so you know for for people out there that that aren't you know familiar with the philosophy of of Mary Edwards and what what you what you guys are trying to achieve I guess uh with with the wines that you're making I mean what, what would you what do you think what, what are you guys doing well, it's, it's interesting that he keeps coming back to Sauvignon Blanc because originally we were 100% Pinot Noir and Mary only started to make the Sauvignon Blanc because she went to winemaker dinners that she was holding and realized people wanted to start with a white wine. It's funny. It's funny how winemakers, winemaker dinners drive a lot of decisions, believe it or not, because you need to, you actually need to have yeah. things that kind of go through the whole meal 
And you know, and, and I understand. I understand. Yeah, yeah. It, I made like many dessert wines for winemaker dinners that I did not want to make. So. Well, we make a dessert wine that does go to winemakers. <laughs> we all do. Yeah. I love making it. It's so much fun. It's a late harvest Sauvignon Blanc. I oh, love dessert wine. This is the best. Um, it's it's awesome. But we are uh, we focus on Pinots. Russian River exclusively, except for Sonoma Coast that we also make. Um, and uh, we focus on the vineyard. So you can't make great wine without great grapes. So over the years, Mary was able to acquire, um, now we're at 80 acres of estate vineyards that we own um, or lease, have long-term leases on, and they're throughout the Russian River Valley. So our most northern one is just outside of the town of Healdsburg, which is in the northern end, um, in what's called the Middle Reach, right. like where William Selium is, Bocchioli, mm -hmm. uh, Booker, up that way. Never heard of any of them. I don't know. No, no. Yeah. Like, uh, or I, something? Yeah. You know, they're... <laughs> And I, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, and then um, our vineyards kind of span through the Russian River Valley all the way down to our Meredith estate, which is the most southern and western uh, uh, vineyard that we own. And that was actually the first vineyard that she purchased. It is uh, so close to the coast that originally when she purchased it, it was considered Sonoma Coast. They, um, oh. But then they expanded the Russian River Valley and, uh, and then it ended up moving into Russian River. Yeah. At that time, um, Sonoma Coast didn't have a name. And so she had a really hard time getting the Meredith Estate name to take off. People didn't really want to buy it. And then as soon as she was able to put Russian River on it, it was like, boom. Yeah, they're like, damn, I I'm good. Yeah. I'll take it. Yeah. That, that, which is funny because if it was Sonoma Coast now, they'd probably take it like that too. You know? Yeah. Um, it's interesting, isn't it? it? It's all about years, strange. right? But um, but it's a uh, um, we focus on the vineyards. Mary actually has her own clone. Uh, that's how awesome she is. <laughs> she discovered yeah. uh, she she actually took a cutting from the Mount Eden Vineyard in the yep. Santa Cruz Mountains in the seventies and registered it as at UC Davis. Um, so it's called UCD thirty seven, and we have quite a bit of that planted. Um, it's very small berry. Um, dark inky clone with lots of tannin and, and that indicates kind of the style we're going for something very uh rich dark lots of fruit but also lots of structure and um uh, um yeah that's what yeah we, uh, no yeah. i mean that's all i mean as as you know as making pinot noir if we can get small berry dark berries that sign me up right i mean that, that totally exactly what we want um unless you know, it's a heritage vineyard but <laughs> you know very true very true um you know i feel i mean you, you you're operating in 80 acres which mm -hmm. is is a decent amount you know yeah. um it, but but I know, I, I, I feel like I'm, this is not what, what, what they want me to say, but again, Saw Blanc, did you plant some Mousquet Saw Blanc out there? Because I know that's your jam. So, so of the 80 acres, we have 22 acres of Sauvignon Blanc. Um, no, 24, sorry, 24 yeah. acres of Sauvignon Blanc. That is our estate. The rest is purchased um, for Sauvignon Blanc. And uh, we were only able to plant it five years ago. So Mary was able to acquire two pieces of property and everybody said we were crazy to plant Sauvignon Blanc because it's ideal Pinot Noir land. And we said, but we love our Sauvignon Blanc and Sauvignon Blanc wants good land too. Yeah, I mean, it'd be like, do you understand that we, we have the best Sauvignon Blanc in, in California? Like that's <laughs> it was the highest rate, you know, I mean, there's, there's things that make make sense for that. I mean, and, yeah. yeah, and and with our style, we have we use about one third Sauvignon Mosquet, two thirds of the Shenandoah clone, and yep. we actually planted that in our vineyards to maintain that. So, awesome. Two thirds of the acreage is planted to the Shenandoah, one third of Sauvignon Mosquet. So when we pick it, we have the perfect blend already going into our barrels. Yeah. 
No, that, that, that's that's really awesome. I, I see that we do have uh, uh, a question here. So we, let, you know. is this a, is there any acreage growth plans with the ownership change that one or a different one? Uh, there's that Unless one. I knew there's another one earlier on, but let's do it that one. I'll I'll find that other one. So okay. that's okay. on you. That's not on me. It's on you. So you know if. There's no definite plans, but if a great vineyard or piece of land came for, up for sale, I'm sure um, it would be in consideration if it made sense for us. But right now it's no concrete plans. <laughs> great answer. Um, Heidi, have you been to World of Pinot Noir before? Yes, twice. Yeah, I, I feel like I've, and I, I, I look ridiculous currently. Um, this is part of <laughs> nobody COVID. looks great. Why, and why should we? I mean, you look great. Like I don't, I don't. I personally don't look great. You look great. Thank like you, you can't you. say that. But um, I feel like we've met before. Um, I agree. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I and and you know, I don't know if it's why. It could be people didn't realize like winemakers and stuff. We, I, I don't know if you're on the road or stuff. It, who knows where we meet. You know, I mean, right. that's kind of part of everything. Um, were, were you at last year's Wabin? I was in, yeah, I was in, there in 2018 and 19. Yeah. Because last right. year was, it was a virtual or did it get canceled? I can't even remember. No, 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 no. We nailed yeah. it right before. It we were the last event, last hurrah, yeah. you know. Yeah. So I, we, yeah, we you went didn't to Bukhara, get a no. Not last year in 2020, but yeah, I was at the Bacara in 19 and 18. 19 and 18, uh, right. Okay. And for those of you in the know, when we're there, we always have a little bottle of Sauvignon Blanc behind always. the table or two. Yeah, because I felt like I've had a, a little nip of that, you know, uh, you know, at a whop and taste. I mean, I, I know, I know I've seen Mary there, you know, and, and yeah. the thing is like, Mary Edwards has been part of World Pinot Noir for quite some time, which is mm -hmm. super rad. I mean, again, you know, we keep talking about salt block and that's on me. I apologize, <laughs> but it's, um, Mary, was, it, you guys are, you guys have been so big on Pinot Noir and, and been part of World of Pinot Noir and, and you're part of uh, World of Pinot Noir 2021, which is, you know, Hey, yeah. we're going to do a virtual thing. And, I'm it's sure you've done a million virtual things uh, uh, this year, right? I mean, of course. And yeah. Probably you too. And hey, we're getting used to it. I, I know now, like, oh, I can get this table and set up my phone here. <laughs> yeah, you, you <laughs> have here a money a setup. I'm not going to lie. Like, <laughs> you have a very money setup. I should have stayed at the winery and done, done mine there, but um i i need to come home at some point uh, <laughs> uh I, but, I can't do it from home i have two little boys and they yeah. would be like who back here looking and then you'd hear screaming <laughs> yeah yeah well my wife's pregnant so i definitely need to be home with my wife um, yes um my lovely wife who's over here <laughs> um but uh i i hear you're doing tech though this year virtual tech Yes, virtual tech. And I've never done tech before, so I have no idea what I'm doing yet or yeah, what well, I'm gonna, how I'm going to be involved. And there's a helicopter going by. Isn't that great? I hope I can hear me. I hope I hope it was you and not me, because I'd be more worried if the helicopter's over my house. Um, yeah, I think it's you. It's me. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, I would... I, I, uh, I love tech so much. I think tech is so cool. It's like, it's winemaker camp, you know, frankly. Winemaker That's what it camp, sounds like. It's so much fun. And, um, you know, this year obviously is different. We'll do a little virtual thing. But I think that, you know, where you are, you'll be with probably a lot of people you know, frankly. Yeah. You know? I'm hoping. Um, and, and we'll just do this kind of virtual thing. And I, I hope to have you, you know, 2022 we'll do it back in person let's hope we can see people um by then um but i think we'll have a lot to talk about after uh, this year because 2020 was such a was unprecedented it? year oh really was it i don't i don't, <laughs> I don't recall <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what you're talking about um <laughs> yeah you know <laughs> Uh, well, I have to say, I have to do my, my, my whopping thing is that, you know, 
there are all, all the virtual seminars are live on, on Wappen.com for, for people out there, like dive into those. There's a ton of them. It's going to be super rad. I think Mary Edwards is actually part of them. Um, yeah, we have so many things with, with World of Pinot Noir. So just jump on the website, kind of just look through them, I guess, for people out there. Um, Heidi, what I, I guess, you know, I, I'm, I'm more, I like talking to winemakers. So I'm, I'm, I'm kind of going more that way. Uh, how are the 2020s and um, what's going on right now? Uh, 2020s are, um, I'm working on them right now. They're interesting because I have some really red fruit flavors that I haven't had in the past. Um, so this is going to be a different year and the tannins are really nice. Um, and they have really nice um, texture or silkiness to them. So um, it's, it's going to be uh, fun. Yeah, cool. No, I, I, uh, I mean, shit, I don't know. It was... It we were affected by so much stuff this year. Mm -hmm. I mean, okay. uh, I don't know how affected you guys were um, with smoke. I don't, don't know how much we should get into that, but you know. Um, Everybody got affected to some extent in the Russian River Valley, I would say. So yeah. we're all dealing with it and we're all um, figuring out what to do if we have lots that are affected and it, and there was no rhyme or reason to it. Um, uh, you know, like you could have one vineyard that was right next to the fire that is totally fine and one that is 20 miles away and is completely smoke tainted. So I, it, yeah. it really depended on the winds and mother nature. And so it's it's a learning experience for sure. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I've dealt with smoke taint uh, here and there and we were definitely terrified because we were smoked out as well. And, uh, mm -hmm. I, you know, I... I, I, I I feel I, I blind tasted things. I feel I feel good about it, I guess. But um, I mean, yeah. I mean, there's things you got to deal with, and and um, I still think the wines were great in 2020. And I think mm -hmm. I think let's let's go to to vintages that are going to be coming out pretty soon. 2019s I think are, are really nice, and so really I, nice I, vintage. Yeah, I think we we you know I think you guys especially have a lot coming out that's going to be really good. So. We do. Hey, we yeah. deal with it, right? We we uh, we deal with it. You know, every year it's something something else. Um, um, well, that's what makes us exciting and fun, though. I mean, that's why I have a lot of gray hairs, you know. <laughs> but they don't show on. It's Instagram. uh it's a, uh, it keeps us on our toes. We're always learning something new. We're always changing up something to deal with whatever Mother Nature is thrown at us. I mean, there's very rarely do you have that picture perfect vintage yeah no uh, absolutely but you know what i really 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 hope that we we get that picture per perfect vintage this <laughs> would be nice honestly this would be, be nice. amazing if everything just kind of comes together we're not gonna get sick we're just gonna and we're gonna make kick-ass wine so um i really hope for that so um, you know what no need to hope. We're gonna make kick-ass wine because that's our jobs. Uh, that's you. You're right. You're so right. I was gonna really cuss very, very vibrantly cuss right now, but I'm not going to. Uh, but yes, yes, yes. <laughs> uh, I guess is what I will say. So, um, I mean, really, that's it. Like, this was great. I, I, uh, I, I, I love, love. Uh, I guess, uh, meeting you if we have not met before. I mean, this is how yes. this works with a lot of us. Uh, I I hope all the best with you guys and, and uh, Mary Edwards. I love the wines. Um, and and I know you've been just killing it. So uh, mm -hmm. awesome to talk to you. Really is. Awesome to talk with you. Awesome to share this with everybody and share yeah. a little bit about us. And uh, gosh, hopefully um, we'll all get vaccinated and we're gonna hang we can out. all meet we're all gonna hang out and hug and stuff i guess yeah um, exactly yeah <laughs> and enjoy world of pino back yeah, and world of pino War. go to the website buy these seminars let's get on this buy the case boxes 
I mean, there's yes. so many cool, cool Pinots out there from all over from Burgundy, Yarra Valley, California, Oregon. Let's do this. And they're all so distinct. They're so different, so distinct. They're great. I mean, even like you and I, who are, you know, winemakers are in it. We have to drink a lot of different Pinots and things like that. We even like the wines. Think about that, you know? We even like these wines. Come on. So um, it, it's been great, though, Heidi. I, I really appreciate it. And everybody out there, awesome. And uh, thank you. See y'all in March. Yeah. Bye, yeah. Heidi. Bye. Thanks. Have a great evening. Hey, you too.